Hey, it's Michelle, your CETC Biology Tutor. In this video, I'll be giving you a subject overview for a CSET Biology. Basically, I'll be outlining the topics on the syllabus that you should know about. Not everyone may have had access to the syllabus, and in some cases, some of you may not have been even taught the entire syllabus. So I figured it would be useful for me to go through the topics that you should know about on the syllabus. So let's look at it from the syllabus outline. So CSET biology is divided into three sections. Section A, living organisms in the environment. Section B, life processes and disease. And section C, continuity and variation. So I'm gonna break down the topics that you need to know for each of these sections. Okay, so let's look at section A, living organisms in the environment. So this section covers the following topics. So you're gonna be looking at classification and characteristics of living organisms. So you should know the levels of classification, the seven characteristics of living organisms. Secondly, ecosystem study. So this would include sampling methods such as the quadrac and line transit. Telgren funnel method, pooters, those are all different sampling methods. It also includes looking at the soil components, the different types of soil, how you can measure the water capacity, the water holding capacity of different soils, the importance of soil to living organisms, and then it also includes ecological terms, knowing the difference between certain ecological terms such as population, community, niche, habitat, ecosystem. So you need to know your ecological terms. Thirdly, feeding relationships, feeding and special relationships. So that is going to include food chains and webs. You need to know the symbiotic relationships such as commensalism, mutualism, parasitism. So how organisms have a close association with each other and how they benefit from each other and then in some cases how they are harmed. So you should know those symbiotic relationships as well. Fourthly, the nutrient cycles that you should know about would be the carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle. So basically how these nutrients are recycled in the ecosystem and the role of decomposers in each of these cycles. And then finally, for this section, you should be aware of the impact of human activities on the environment. So you should know about pollution, deforestation, soil erosion. You should know how these activities affect our natural resources. And you should know the differences between renewable and non-renewable resources. And then, the final topic in this section would be related to population growth and how certain activities, how certain factors affect population growth. So that is section A. Okay, let's move on to section B. So section B covers the following topics related to life processes and disease. So the first topic is cells. So you should know to label your plant and animal cells, your bacterial cells, and know the differences among them in terms of the types of organelles you find in them, what organelles they have in common, what organelles they have that are different. And then also you should know about the cell transport processes of diffusion, osmosis, and active transport. Secondly, nutrition. And nutrition will be broken down into plant nutrition and human nutrition or animal nutrition. So as it relates to human nutrition, you should know about the nutrients needed in the diet, the digestive system structure, the enzymes involved in digestion, and you should know how temperature and pH affects enzyme activity. And then you should also know about the deficiency diseases caused by a lack of particular nutrients in the body. And then as it relates to plant nutrition, you should know the photosynthesis equation. So how photosynthesis occurs, the structure of the leaf, both externally and internally. Thirdly, respiration. 
This topic would cover the respiratory system, so knowing how to label the respiratory system, knowing the structure of the alveoli, um, breathing, which would include the movements that the body would have during inhalation and exhalation, on um, gaseous exchange, gaseous exchange in terms of the characteristics that are common to all gaseous exchange surfaces. So we're talking about in humans, in fish, which would be the gills, and in plants, which would be the surface of the leaf through the stomata. So you should know what characteristics are common to all gaseous exchange surfaces. And then also in this topic, you should know the effects of smoking on the human body. So this would include on the pregnant woman, the effects it would have on its developing, on her developing baby. And then for sure you need to know the difference of the difference between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So you should know your equations and as it relates to anaerobic respiration, you should understand the concept of oxygen depth when there's not enough oxygen in the body and how the body relies on anaerobic respiration. Um, to produce that little bit of energy during strenuous activity. So you should know those equations for aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Moving on to transport in plants and animals. So in animals, humans particularly, you should know your heart structure, the components of blood, your blood vessels, know to compare the artery, the veins and the capillaries. And you should also know about the immune system, the different types of immunity, natural versus artificial, active versus passively acquired, and then blood clotting. The blood clotting process is another topic that you should know about in human transport. Now as it relates to plant transport, you should know the structure of the xylem vessels, the phloem vessels, the process of transpiration. So the movement of water through a plant from the roots up to the leaves and then it also includes food storage as well. So that would cover transport in plants and animals. Fifthly, excretion and osmoregulation. So you should know the different excretory organs and their products. So we're talking about the kidneys, the lungs, the skin, those are the main excretory organs you should know about. You should know the structure of the kidneys, the nephron, how urine is made, the role of ADH, antidiuretic hormone in osmoregulation. So those are the key topics that you should know about in excretion. Um, you can also know about the excretion in plants as well. That is another area that you should know about, the different ways that plants get rid of their metabolic waste. So moving on to movement, so movement, you should know the different types of movement in plants and animals. So in terms of, is it whole movement, part movement, growth movement, which is shown, all three are shown in animals while, while only plants would show two, part movement and growth movement. So you should know the differences between that. And then for bones, the bones of the skeleton, the different types of bones, types of joints, the muscle action, how biceps and triceps work, and that should be the main things you should know about in movement. The importance of movement, locomotion in, in humans and animals, why is important. So those are the key topics in movement. Irritability, this would cover the nervous system, the structure and functions of neurons, reflex pathways, so we're talking about cranial reflexes and spinal reflexes, the structure of the brain, the structure and function of the eye, so make sure you know your parts of the eye, their functions, including accommodation, the process of accommodation, how the lens would adjust its shape to accommodate those light rays coming from objects at different distances, know your skin, and then also drug abuse is a topic in irritability, so the effects of drugs especially on the brain. So the next topic growth, this would cover growth substances in plants and animals, 
So we're looking at hormones that help plants and animals to grow and develop. It would also cover growth curves and seed germination. Topic nine, reproduction. So this will be broken down into human reproduction and flowering plants reproduction. So in humans, you should know your male and female reproductive systems, the menstrual cycle, birth control methods, and then in the flowering plants, you should know the structure of the flower, the pollination process that leads up to double fertilization that would farm the seed and the fruit. So you should know your seed structure, the different seed and fruit dispersal methods. So that would cover reproduction. And then the final topic in section B is disease. So you should know your different types of diseases, pathogenic, hereditary, deficiency, and physiological diseases. And pay special attention to like hypertension, diabetes, the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Um, understand the differences between malaria and dengue. So you should know your vectors and pathogens, the difference between those terms. So that is disease. So that covers section B. Let's move on to look at section C. So this is the final section on the syllabus, continuity and variation. So this section would cover the following topics. First of all, cell division. So make sure you know your differences between mitosis and meiosis. So the key features, the functions of each type of cell division. Genetic and environmental variation. So the differences between that in addition to the difference between continuous variation and discontinuous variation. Thirdly, inheritance of characteristics. So this is when the genetic crosses come in. So you should know the, the complete dominance, which would refer to the inheritance of characteristics like albinism, height, tongue rolling, sickle cell anemia. So that's a simple genetic cross. And then you have incomplete dominance, which will refer to the flower color in a species of flowers known as impassions. So when neither allele is dominant over the other, so they form like a mixture. So you have white flowers, red flowers, and any mixture is pink flowers. And then for co-dominance, that would be related to the inheritance of blood groups. So ABO blood groups. And then finally, and I see this one come quite often, sets link traits. So make sure you understand how hemophilia and color blindness are inherited. So you have to include your sex chromosomes, X, X in females, XY in males. So those are the sex link traits, hemophilia and color blindness. Then the next topic on speciation. So this is related to the whole concept of the biological species concept, formation of new species, isolating mechanisms that actually contribute to the formation of new species. So that covers speciation. And then fifthly, natural and artificial selection. So you should know the differences between those types of selection, how natural selection is influenced obviously by the environment. It's all about the organisms adapting to their environment more so than than the traits being purposely selected for as it is in artificial selection. So in artificial selection, humans have a greater influence and they deliberately choose certain desirable characteristics for their benefits. So that would include animal and plant breeding. So you should know the differences between those types of selection. And then finally, genetic engineering. So know your definition. So it involves the altering of genes, taking genes from one organism to an, and adding it to another organism, basically to alter and change its characteristics. And one particular area you should know about would be how insulin, so insulin is a medicinal product that is made by genetic engineering. You should know how it is created through that process. And then also the advantages and disadvantages of genetic engineering. So generally know your applications for genetic engineering in agriculture 
and medicine. So now I've completed the syllabus outline for all the sections in the subject. I like to go through the exam format. So first of all, paper one is the multiple choice question paper which would contain 60 questions, 60 multiple choice questions, and that is for an hour and 15 minutes. So that is worth 60 marks, which is 40% of your overall grade. The paper two, which would consist of six questions, that would be for two hours and 30 minutes. So this is a long paper, and it consists of section A, which usually has a question that is investigative meaning that it may be related to a graph, a table, a chart, an experiment. So usually the first question is the longest question and it has the most marks. So that question one is section A and then question two and three in section A will be the structured question. So you may have to like label a diagram, write a little bit about the related to the diagram or whatever but they're more short answers, structured questions, and those are worth 15 marks. And then section B would be the longer type questions or the essay type questions, and you have three of those to do, and each question is worth 15 marks. So that gives a total of 100 marks for the paper, and that is worth 60% of your overall grade. And the third paper, which is the SBA alternative, for those who are not actually in school, who are doing it privately. So private candidates will do this paper, and this paper is two hours and 10 minutes. So what this covers is practical based questions. So you have to be familiar with the lab equipment, materials and procedures for key topics on the syllabus. So you can actually take in notes into the exam room for this paper. So it's three practical based questions. So it's worth 100 marks and that is also adds 60% to your overall grade. So that is it for the CSET biology subject outline, the syllabus outline and exam format. So hopefully you have a better understanding of the topics that you should know for this subject. 